Dr. Ben Carson attended Yale University and received his MD from the University of Michigan Medical School. Dr. Carson, so much, and you've been one of the folks who've talked a lot early on about some of the faults with the Affordable Care Act, or so-called Obamacare. I call it that because the president said we can refer to it as Obamacare. Sure. What the Republicans have criticized, what do you replace it with? So if it's repealed, what do you replace it with? Because we have problems in the health and in insurance and health care system. Sure. What do you replace it with? Well, there's no question that it needs to be replaced before you repeal it because you don't want to pull the safety net out from underneath people. And uh, the reason that I don't like Obamacare, first of all, it, not so much because it doesn't work and not so much because it's, it's unaffordable, but really because it flies in the face of what we are as a nation, a nation that is up for and by the people with the government there to facilitate life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Obamacare comes along with the government saying, we don't care what you the people think. We're shoving this down your throat, and if you don't like it, too bad. That's completely antithetical to the principles of the founding of this country. So I would replace it with something that really puts the power back in the hands of consumers and healthcare providers, health savings accounts, available from the day you're born until the day you die. You can pass it on when you die. We pay for it with the same dollars that we use for traditional health care. And you give people flexibility, the ability to actually move money within their family. You're $500 short, your wife can give it to you out of hers or your cousin or your uncle. It gives you enormous flexibility to cover almost anything. Um, and then your catastrophic health care costs a lot less because virtually nothing is coming out of it except for catastrophic health care. It's like a homeowner's policy with a big deductible versus a homeowner's policy where you want every single thing covered. Now, that works very well for the majority of people, not so well for the indigent. Um, and, you know, well, how do we take care of the indigent now? Medicaid, annual Medicaid budget, four to five hundred billion dollars. How many people participate? A quarter of the population, about 80 million people. 80 million into 400 billion goes 5,000 times, $5,000 each man, woman, and child in America. What could you buy with that? Uh, a concierge practice. Most of those cost between two and $3,000 a year. Still have a couple thousand left over for your catastrophic insurance. I'm not advocating we do that. I'm saying that's how much money there is. And think about what happens. Uh, first of all, Washington would say you can't give health savings accounts to the indigent because they're too stupid and they wouldn't be able to manage them. And uh, they think everybody's like them. But the fact that it's not true, and uh, in fact, you know, they said that about food stamps, and people learn how to manage food stamps. And they would learn this too. Mr. Jones, who has that diabetic foot ulcer, quickly learns not to go to the emergency room, spend five times more. He would go to the clinic. Same treatment, but instead of just sending them out, they say, now let's get your diabetes under control so you're not back here in three weeks with another problem. He's learning personal responsibility, and we're doing things that teach that rather than dependency. A quick one for you. Some of our participants tonight are in the Senate because they had a vote tonight. One of the measures, Planned Parenthood. Should taxpayers fund Planned Parenthood? Absolutely, they should not fund Planned Parenthood. You know, they, uh, these recent videos show the atrocity of that and the level of depravity that we have sunk into as a nation. And we simply have to stop that. If people want to do it, let them take money out of their pocket. Let them find other depraved individuals to help them. We have another doctor in the audience. There may be more, Dr. Carson, but Dr. Oscar Green of Londonderry submitted this question. When elected president, what is your game plan to reform the tax code? Uh, well, you know, I base mine on who I believe is the fairest individual in the universe. That would be God. And uh, he said, I want a tithe. He didn't say if your crops fail, no tithe. And if you have a bumper crop, triple tithe. So there must be something inherently fair about proportionality, and that's what I would do. Um, it would have to be somewhere between 10 and 15 percent initially, um, and there'd be no deductions and no loopholes. We'll come back on your second round. Thank you, Dr. Trump. Thank you.